I want to describe to you a framework or model for thinking about aphasia, a language disorder that occurs in about a third of people who have had a stroke. Technically, aphasia is a language impairment. But throughout my career as a speech-language pathologist and a researcher working with thousands of people with aphasia, I've witnessed how people with aphasia not only feel, but are isolated and marginalized by society. They often don't return to favorite activities. Friends drift away. Many feel unproductive and depressed. And families experience these impacts as well. The problem is that communication is integral to almost every part of our lives. When communication fails, this has a massive ripple effect on other areas of life. These substantial effects of communication failure stand in stark contrast to the World Health Organization definition of health as the ability to live life to its full potential. My colleagues and I wrestled with how to represent this pervasive impact of aphasia. We wanted to make sure we were measuring the outcomes that really matter to a person's life, whether that person is in a hospital needing a bed raised, in rehabilitation wanting to discuss important decisions about life, or just trying to navigate everyday conversations years after a stroke. We wondered how to help healthcare providers, policymakers, people affected by aphasia, or others understand the impact of aphasia in a way that would focus services on areas of critical importance. An answer is found in Living with Aphasia Framework for Outcome Measurement, or AFROM. Nothing has thrilled me more professionally than working with the team who developed this broad, non-prescriptive guide for thinking about aphasia. AFROM takes account of the impact of aphasia on life areas deemed important by people with aphasia and their families because we developed it with direct input from people actually experiencing life with aphasia. My colleagues and I started with the World Health Organization International Classification of Functioning Disability and Health, or ICF, and adapted that internationally accepted framework to specifically address aphasia. Here you see the AFROM graphic showing snapshot domains depicting key areas of interest in aphasia. So let's have a look at each of these snapshot domains. At the bottom, language and related impairments refers to the linguistic and related cognitive processes required to speak, understand, read, and write. This area reflects the core underlying impairment in aphasia, the language disorder. Years ago, this is where I focused most of my attention in managing aphasia, working on things like naming common objects, forming a grammatical sentence, or following one-step instructions. In fact, speech-language pathologists typically test these sorts of isolated language tasks in order to assess the pattern and severity of core linguistic deficits. Participation refers to a person's involvement in his or her personally relevant life situations or roles. For example, some of my key life habits are teaching, being a wife, chatting with my friends, or taking care of our clumsy coon hound, JJ. Our life habits and activities reflect who we are and what goes on in our daily lives, really the critical part of living life. This is where intervention for aphasia can really make a difference. In fact, as a clinician and researcher, I've learned that participation is the key to meaningful outcomes in aphasia. People affected by aphasia want to be engaged in activities and have meaningful relationships. These are directly associated with a higher quality of life. Personal factors include characteristics inherent to the person, such as age, gender, or culture. This domain also includes psycho psychosocial characteristics, such as identity, personality, 
or confidence. I've seen so many people with aphasia experience changes in self-esteem and identity when faced with repeated communication breakdowns. I know if I suddenly had difficulty communicating, I would probably be afraid to try new things or go new places. I might feel embarrassed to see old friends or even answer the phone. Lack of confidence, lowered self-esteem, embarrassment, and anxiety can be devastating side effects of aphasia. So personal factors are a key part of the aphasia picture. Environment includes factors outside of the person with aphasia that influence communication. These factors might facilitate participation or they might get in the way of communication and participation. When I visit a healthcare facility, I'm still amazed at how difficult these settings are to navigate. Imagine being in the hospital with aphasia. How would you figure out where to go for outpatient admissions? How would you sign a consent for surgery? How would you understand the doctor's instructions? These are barriers to participating in a major aspect of life, healthcare. There are ways to remove these barriers. In fact, one of my all-time favorite activities has been writing about ways to reduce environmental barriers to help people with aphasia better experience life. The environment plays a major role in living with aphasia. Now let's look here at the middle of the AFROM graphic. In the center, the four snapshot domains interact to create life with aphasia, a concept similar to quality of life, but focused specifically on life with aphasia. I really like the way this graphic reminds us that the domains overlap. Life with aphasia results from the dynamic interaction of the language impairment, opportunities and success in participating in life, how one feels about oneself, and support of society and the external environment. Since its development some years ago, I've used AFROM to talk about aphasia to students, healthcare providers, policymakers, researchers, funders, and many others, and find that people from a wide range of backgrounds really begin to grasp the big picture and better appreciate the needs of people living with aphasia. Using AFROM has made a huge difference in how I talk about aphasia and a huge difference in how others understand the impact of aphasia. I hope you will join me and others in creating a world where all people with aphasia participate fully in life.